Hello, everybody. How's it going? It's going great. Can't complain. See you with the red Jordans. Oh, yeah. Fresh. Kind of. Kind of. Are you doing What's that guy for? How do you think that might have been the best regular season game you played? Do I think that might have been? Um, statistically, yeah. You know, I feel like, um, you know, stats wise, you know, I had, you know, everything that you could have. So I think that's dope. But, um, you know, I think there's, you know, I don't, I don't know how to say what game is, is what. It kind of just depends on the game and, you know, how important of a game it was or the magnitude of the game. So it's kind of hard to compare a game. I just try to appreciate them. So, Bobby, would the first criteria be that you win the game? And then whatever, you know, you just mentioned magnitude or whatever impact, is that how you kind of, is that the first thing? That yeah, win the game. You want to play good. Um, you want your team to play good. You want your teammates uh, around you to play good. And then, you know, you kind of go from there. You know, the crowd, the fans, where we at, you know, are we silencing the team on the road? Are we, um, you know, getting our crowd into the game? Like it, you know, varies. but. Win is, is definitely the first important thing. You all liked up for it. Is that one of your better games, trash talking? Um, I don't know. I hadn't been mic'd up in probably like three, I don't know, three, four years. So it's up there for sure, especially because Shane was there, got rubbing his face. It's always good. Are you ever conscious of that? Of what? Being mic'd up. Um, I used to be. Not really, though. Like. You just know that it's there, but so you don't try to say anything crazy. But um, once the game kind of gets going, you forget that it's there. When you take a look at this game, the last few weeks, it's been so much about shutting down a running back that could go for over 100 yards at any point in time. How is it different looking at the Vikings this week with as much as they throw the ball? Um, it's different uh, from the standpoint of you know the way they use their running backs. They like to pass a lot more, um, but they use their running backs a lot more in the passing game. Um, they try to get them out in the, uh, in the flats. They try to um, set up screens and, and different type of things. But, um, you know, if you kind of uh, see that they, they want to run the ball, they want to kind of establish the run and, and things of that nature. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they come in and, and try to run it a little bit more and, and try to balance up their offense. Um, but, yeah, you know, you watch them, they pass a lot. And, you know, we have to really be on our, our keys. A lot of it is is just quick game. You don't take really – much shots down the field. So, you know, it's just going to test our discipline, test, you know, how patient can we be and, and um, you know, how many plays we can make. Because, you know, it's not too many teams that are just going to sit there and do three yards each time and take us all the way down the field. In the, in the two games that um, Michael Kendricks played this year, what did you notice just about what he brought to you guys, what kind of impact, just the way that he played alongside you? Um, he brought, brought speed, uh, for sure. Uh, definitely. Um, I think he had a couple sacks too, so you know, um, you know, we got him blitzing a little bit, and so that's kind of, you know, what I expect. Expect him to to come in, uh, learn, and and uh, just fly around, and make plays. And, you know, he's not, he hasn't been around, um, you know, to kind of just study the defense the way that that most people can. So you know, you just kind of try to catch him up and you know help him out as much as you can. Pete mentioned the number of yards that were given up last week as a result of some missed tackles. How do you kind of approach that with the guys? I know the coaches have their own thing, but what points are you coaching up with some of the members of the defense on the tackles? I think you just gotta. I think you just gotta take pride in it. You know, I think uh, a lot of it too is you know sometimes we have uh, walkthroughs and sometimes we have um, you know you know practice days where we're not like in pads, we're in shoes and, and things like that, and we got to take those days just as seriously. And we have to, you know, make those days where you visualize your tackle. Because a lot of it, a lot of tackling to me is just a mindset. You know, you don't really have to tackle somebody every single day to be a, a, a great tackler. It's more of a mindset. Like, I'm going to get this guy down. This guy's not going to pass me. And, you know, you get that mindset and it don't matter how you, how you do it, you'll get him down. So um, a lot of it is just preaching the mindset, preaching you know the importance of every opportunity you have to kind of visualize yourself tackling someone um, is important, and you know just make plays and understand that you're not tackling somebody by yourself. You know even though it may feel like that when you're in space, you know you got ten other guys coming um, you know to help you, and that's important too to make sure the guy that's that's out there maybe you know by himself to make sure he feels like you know his guy's gonna come and be there for him.
So does that mean don't, sorry, does that mean don't take unnecessary shots? You know, if, if you're the guy that's out there and you know that other people are coming, does that mean don't take the unnecessary shot and go for the ball when you're supposed to go for the tackle? Um, yeah, like, you know, you definitely don't want to go for the ball, you know, if you just by yourself, because if you miss, it's, uh, you know, a lot of gang. But at the end of the day, you be a football player. You know, you don't want to be out there thinking too much. You know, you got to make a play. Some people, you know, we used to watch, like, you know, Peanut Tillman used to be out there by himself all the time and, and you know, figure out a way to punch the ball out. So, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to make the game complicated. You just want to play and, you know, want guys to play fast and, you know, for the other 10 guys, get over there as quick as you can. You saw Kirk Cousins last year with a different team. How's he look in this offense? Um, it's pretty much the same thing. Quick game. Um, you know, they they kind of incorporate a lot of the things that he was running with the, the other team. It's, you know, he he gets the ball out really fast. You know, he try to complement it with the running game. Um, sometimes when they get uh, down in the score, they they pass a little bit more. And um, you know, when he takes his shots, he's pretty accurate. But um, you know, if you blitz and and kind of get in his face, and you know. Uh, he's, I guess, the highest quarterback with the balls being batted down. So, you know, we understand the game's going to be quick game and, and trying to hit the, the backs of the flats or uh, the tight end over the middle and take your shots when you can. So, um, you know, it's pretty much the same thing that we've seen. When you're a defensive player of the week, do you take out the rest of the defensive teammates for dinner or uh, are you the guest of honor? Um, I mean, I would like to be guest of honor, but, um, you know, I. I you know, I, I tell my teammates that it's more of a, a team, you know, like a defensive thing than, than it is myself. Because without the D line, without the, you know, without the secondary, you know, having great coverage on, on that particular play, I wouldn't have made the pick. And without the D line, you know, kind of covering me up, I wouldn't be able to make, you know, some of the tackles that I made. So, um, you know, even though it's an individual award, I, you know, all the credit goes to my teammates. You guys have three takeaways and a fourth down stop in the red zone the last two games. Just what, what's the key to being good in the red zone, even if the opponent's maybe moving the ball between the 20s? Um, again, I think it's, it's your mindset. It's, you know, no matter what happened for you to get down into the red zone, um, you having that belief, that confidence that you're going to stop these people, you know, this team from, from getting into the end zone at, you know, no matter where it's at, if it's on a one yard line, if it's on the 10 yard line. You know, it's all about a mindset. You know, uh, since I've been here, we always, you know, just preach that. And, you know, we've seen that, you know, from Earl's plays to Cam's plays, um, you know, even the two point conversion on, on the goal line where, you know, they're, he's right there and, and we knock it out and recover the ball. So um, I think it's a mindset. It's, um, you know, a way to train yourself to think. And, um, you know, we've been making plays. It's huge. It's always huge to, you know, not let points get on the board. What do you think about KJ Wright being the Walter Payton nominee for the Seahawks? Uh, amazing. You know, um, I'm I'm so happy for him. Uh, this this guy does it all. Um, you know, if you see, you know, some of the the work that he does in the community. Um, you know, this off season, I'm watching him build houses. I'm watching him, you know, go to Africa and build libraries. Um, you know, he's. Um, trying to help kids in the community, trying to help adults in the community, um, and then comes and gives that same energy, you know, in the, in the building, you know, trying to help younger guys, you know, even, uh, you know, last week, um, you know, when he was down in uh, San Francisco, he was FaceTiming, you know, Austin just to check on him and making sure that he was, uh, um, you know, doing good with the playbook and things of that nature. So just, you know, I think it just shows his personality, shows he's a care, caring person, you know, wants to give back and wants to see everybody around him do well. And so I'm super happy for him. Um, I'm excited for him, and, and it's, it's a pretty dope moment for him. Just going back to your uh, pick last week, uh, now that you had a little bit of time to, to watch it again, I'm guessing, uh, can you take us through that, like what's your thoughts when it happened and kind of how it all played out for you? Um, well, earlier earlier down the drive, um, they ran kind of a similar formation, and um, you know he threw it over the the, the running back kind of um, you know sat over the ball and he threw it. I didn't get there fast enough, and I just made a tackle. So I kind of felt like if he was to do that in the red zone, I would have a little bit more time to to make the play. So um, when I seen the formation in the red zone, um, I kind of baited him. I, Kind of act like I didn't see the running back, and then as soon as I see him throw it, uh, I went and I grabbed it, and then I tried to run as fast as I could, and make sure the quarterback didn't catch me, because I wasn't trying to 
hear everybody's mouth. <laughs> and do you know that that was the celebration you were going to do at the end, or you just like gasped? Um, I did not know that was the celebration I was going to do. Um, I wouldn't say I was gassed, but I was tired. And I was just like, well, I feel like they always sleeping on us, and I'm tired, so why not just take a nap? So, when you bait a quarterback, is it with your eyes? How, how do you how do you pretend to not uh, make it look like you don't recognize the running back? It's it's more of a, your body language. It's more of a, you know, in that particular play, you know, the running back kind of sat by me. I kind of really didn't move too much, so he probably thought that he could throw it on the outside because I was on the inside. Knowing, but I, the whole time I had like my you know my back leg planted, waiting for him to just look at the running back and. As soon as he looked and I seen him, you know, move his shoulder, I knew he was going to throw the ball. So I just broke on it. Jared Reed's obviously been a part of the big part of this defense for a couple of years, but with the sacks this year, the quarterback hits, he's doing even more. Just what, what have you yeah. seen out of him? Um, you know, he's been getting after it. You know, he's been uh, amazing in the run game. You know, his uh, you know, the thing that I'm impressed with the most is his growth leadership wise. You know, he's been very vocal, especially up front. Um, you know, he takes a lot of. Uh, pride and, and accountability on on not just understanding what um, you know he has his job, but understanding what uh, the defense is trying to or the offense is trying to do. And you know he tries to call out you know the the plays, and it kind of reminds me of you know how Me Bang was um, you know when he was here, and, and um, you know just the way he's been playing. You know you watch him you know work on his sack or his uh, pass rush moves. You know every single single game and. And uh, you know, you see it. You see the production growth. You see the the leadership growth, and you know, he's just been really, really good for us. You mentioned earlier how much the Vikings like to pass the ball. What do you make of their receiving core? Oh, they're good. You know, they got a you know they got a bunch of receivers. They got a great tight end. You know that that can um, you know get the job done too. So you know, I'm not surprised that you you know you pass. You got you know running backs who can get out in the flat and. and you know, make plays, make people miss. You got a, you know, a receiving group that can go up and jump over people's heads and, and you know, outrun guys down the field. And you got a tight end who doesn't mind coming over the middle and, and getting hit. So, you know, you're not surprised by it, but, you know, you probably would like a little bit of a balance. You know, you don't want to be predictable where everybody just understands that you're going to throw the ball every time. So, again, I would be surprised if they just came in here and tried to pass the ball the whole time. How important is a guy like Reed for what you do? He's very important. You know, he's a he's a guy that you know you always as a linebacker you always love a guy that takes pride in making sure nobody touches you. And you know, he's definitely one of those guys. So for me, it's it's a you know him being on the team is is super important because he keeps me clean. You know, all the guys keep me clean, but you know, Jay Reed's the guy that I'm uh, most of the time right behind. So. Um, you know, he keeps me clean. If you if you try to come and get me, then he makes the play in the backfield. If you stay on him, then I make the play. So, um, you know, we play off each other, and and um, it's always great to have a guy who takes pride in making sure the linebackers don't get touched. What's the communication like between you and the DTs uh, in game? In the game? Yeah. Well, you set the front. Uh, sometimes you you know give them little stunts to kind of get them moving. Um, you know, uh, you you kind of. Understand their body language, whether they they see something, because that's why you know you like to tell the guys if you see something, just go get it, and so you try to you know um, you know play off of them. But a lot of it is you know just trying to get them set up, trying to get them lined up, and then trying to you know maybe throw some stunts in there to to ha help them make a play. And so that's that's probably what it is. Anything else? Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate it.